Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi and welcome to another video for EVE Online. And it's a bit of a special one that we're going to be doing today because, oh boy, this has been the most insane video that I've ever had to record. Not insane in sort of the difficulty or the craziness of the actual content, but in actually getting this ship into a position where I could use it. Today we're going to be looking at the Angel Cartel's brand new destroyer, the Mekubal. And I'm going to show you a fit I've actually been using this for ratting in. Yes, I've been ratting in a Mekubal, I am that much of a moron. But we're also going to talk a little bit about some PvP fits and stuff as well. A bit more theory crafting on that because I'm not really willing to chuck this into a PvP situation just yet. We will talk about how you get these ships in a brief bit as well, but to explain why this has been insane, well essentially in order to get Get one of these currently you need an item that comes out of forgotten relic sites another item that comes from unsecured data sites and a third item that comes out of drifter hives these are quite difficult to get as it stands from there you take those three items off to zarzak which is pretty much permacamped at this point swap those for a token that you then take all the way out to either venal or curse to a guristus or angel station in this case angel and you swap that token for the blueprint yeah bit of a mad one to get hold of the price has come down when i first got this it was 10 billion isk it's now down around the 5 billion mark it's fluctuating a little bit come november these are are supposed to be added into the LP store for the Angel Cartel directly, so they should be a lot cheaper at that point in time, but that remains to be seen. So getting one of these was difficult, then actually bringing it into where I had it docked, very difficult as well, very nerve-wracking transporting a ship of bat value through uh, K-Space at a time when we've got 90% PvP drops. Yeah, Crimson Harvest made this doubly scary. Then to undock it and actually practice with it required my entire corporation to basically be playing eyes and ears for me, scanning and scouting and sort of defending the system that I was in whilst I ran and tested it. So humongous shout out to all the guys and folks in Catskull that helped make this video possible. Now also big thank you and shout out to all the people who usually make these videos possible. That's the people I have on Patreon. They support me every month with monthly donations. You can check at the end of the video, they get their name in the stars there. If you are a more a one-off kind of support person, then head to my PayPal. Uh, I've got a tip jar there. You can drop in the price of a cup of coffee or whatever. Really helps me keep making this content. And I do also have a Redbubble merchandise store. Finally, if you're not able to donate financially or you just don't want to, both are fine. You can also head across to the bit down below, just hit like and drop a comment. That really helps me too. Finally, if you're new to EVE Online or if you just haven't used a referral link before, click my referral link in the description down below, earn yourself 1 million free skill points, gives me a minor kickback, and you can join the Catskull community discord while you're down there as well. Great place to talk to like-minded EVE players who want to help each other learn the game and pilot better. And if you want to join the Catskull Cartel Corporation in-game, that discord is where you make your applications. Anyway, all of that said and done, whoo, verbose. Let's jump right into talking about the Angel Cartel's Mekubal destroyer. Now before we go further in this video, I want to talk about what the Mekubal is. I've already talked about how you currently get them in game. This is October 2023. I'm talking about this. You need to get one item out of a forgotten relic site, another item out of an unsecured data site, and the third item comes out of drifter hives. That means you're going to need to go wormholing to find each of those three items. Of course, you can sell and buy them on the market as well if you can't find a way to do that. I know the one from a drifter hive though is particularly expensive. I also don't remember the names off the top of my head. If I recall, I will put that in the description down below so you know which three items you're looking for. You then take those three items off out to Zarzak, swap it, uh, swap those three items at the Fulcrum for one special token. That special token can then be taken either into Venal to the Gurista spaces there where you can swap it for a Mumba blueprint, or you can fly out to Curse where you can swap that token for a Mekubal blueprint. As far as I'm aware, once this event ends and Zarzak uh, and, and these ships launch properly, which is November sometime when Havoc launches, these will be added directly to the LP store, so they will be a lot easier to come by. And I think some folks on Reddit were suggesting that the build costs themselves, once you've got the blueprint, if you're just accounting for, you know, the actual cost of building the ship, you're probably looking much closer to 200 to 300 million isk build. So this whole five to 10 billion thing going on, yeah, that's due to die out at some point. 
So, with your brand new Mecha Ball in position, what do you do with it? Well, let's have a look at its traits and characteristics. This is, of course, a destroyer. It is a small ship, primarily fitted with small modules. It's an attack hull, recommended for attrition, hit and run, and pursuit tactics. It uses projectile turrets, and it is primarily geared around shields, although I'm not necessarily going to agree with that, as we'll see in a moment. Now, being an Angel Cartel ship, you get bonuses from both Galente and Minmatar Destroyer. Galente Destroyer is going to give you 7.5% bonus to small projectile turret tracking speed, meaning you hit your targets better, and Minmatar Destroyer is going to give you a 10% bonus to small projectile fall off. That is very much an auto cannon style setup there. High speed, orbit nice and close, and be able to pound them with hail. That's how I'll be running this, but we'll talk about that later. We then have a roll bonus, 100% bonus to small projectile turret damage, which effectively doubles the amount of uh, turrets that you count as having on this ship. We'll talk about that in a second later as well, because, oh god, it annoys me. The hard points on this ship are just wonky. You cannot use all four of the... There are basically 16 hard points on the ship. Eight on each of the side. There's two, one on either side that is like a square set of four hard points, and then there's one on each side that's like a line of four hard points as well. It is impossible to get all four turrets on one set of hard points, and if you don't put them in the layout I've got, they actually come out completely counterbalanced, which is just awful. I hate it. CCP, please fix. Anyway, in it, so small projectile turrets are what we're going to be looking at. Being an Angel Cartel ship as well, 25% bonus to warp speed and warp acceleration, which means this does actually warp surprisingly quickly. It's a destroyer with uh, what I'm currently running, 5.63 AU per second, very fast to warp around. Again, I'm going to say now, this is not a ship you really should be using at this point in time. It is way too expensive to bother undocking. I just wanted to try it out and showcase it and give an idea of what you might be able to use it for when that price drops down. So... Let's talk about the fit that I'm running. Now, this is a PvE fit that I'm running. Yes, a PvE Mekubal. I'm using this for Wolf Rye running. This will run C1, C2, Wolf Rye, no problem, and two out of the four standard C13 or C3 Wolf Rye sites. You can do the Fortification Frontier and the Outpost Frontier Stronghold. You cannot, annoyingly, do the Aruz or the Solar Cell due to how those are set up. The Solar Cell, the first wave having a Newt and a Web on a Frigate that's also the trigger, means that you just die really, really quickly whilst trying to deal with everything else. Um, the Aruz has the same problem that you've got four Awakened Up holders early, you'll just get Newted out and webbed to Oblivion in the first wave. The Fortification Frontier Stronghold does work, um, even though you've got those two upholders in the second wave and obviously a lot of newts in the final wave as well. You just have to take out an upholder quickly in wave two, take out the upholder very quickly in wave three, and get into orbit around that battleship ASAP. Anyway, the fit. Let's have a look at this. So for the high slots that I'm running here, I'm running 200mm Autocannon 2s, currently loaded with Hail S. This gives us a whopping DPS of 78.4 over a fall off of up to 8,000 meters. Not bad at all. Good range, good tracking, good damage. 315.5 DPS overall. In a C13, this comes out about 940 DPS it was, so you get a good amount of firepower out of this for a destroyer. My other two high slots utilities are small ghoul compact energy Nosferatus. You could put a launcher in here for a bit of extra damage, but honestly, I didn't find it worth it. I wanted as much capacitor stability as I could possibly get. Our mid slots, I went for a Federation Navy Stasis Webifier to help just slow targets down that are trying to keep me at range, namely the upholders. Also just helps with the frigates, you've got really good tracking on those small autos, but still, a little bit extra doesn't hurt. A Thucker small cap battery, just again, help with capacitor stability, and a Corelli A-Type 1 Mega Newton Afterburner. This could theoretically be in 1 Mega Newton Afterburner too, but I had a Corelli A-Type and it was like, why not? Let's get that extra bonus out of it there. For the mid slots, you could probably swap that Federation Navy Stasis Webifier with another battery, maybe even a cap recharger, just to help you survive those newts a little bit better. Worth considering, I got this to work just fine as it is, um, but it is just worth that thought. I'm actually armor tanking this one, so my low slots, I've got a damage control 2, a reactive armor hardener, a multi-spectrum energized membrane 2, and a Senti A-type small armor repairer. Again, I had one of these lying around, a Tech 2 version probably is enough, but the Senti A-type, it was like, why not? If I'm using a blinged out ship, I may as well bling it a bit more, right? 
that was my thoughts. So why am I using armor rather than using shields? Well, because this is a C13 or Wolf Raya runner. C13s in general or any Wolf Raya system up to C3, this will clear sights and does it surprisingly well. As I said, except the Solar Cell and the Aruz in C3, those are problematic. Every C2 sight otherwise in a Wolf Raya, absolutely doable. Um, I haven't had chance to test C1s, but there's no reason to believe it shouldn't be able to do those as well. Just yeah, there's so much cheaper versions. You can use a Dramiel for that, for crying out loud. You don't need to go all the way up to a Mecha Ball for that. But we've got good armor resists down here with this, and that's before the reactive armor hardener gets online. Lowest is 57, highest is 77. That stays alive quite nicely. 10,000 EHP means we do survive the occasional wrecking shot incoming from some of the battleships and things if you're a little bit slow on getting your traversal up. For the rigs then, I'm looking at a small explosive armor reinforcer 1, a thermal armor reinforcer 1, and a small projectile burst aerator 1. Now you can actually bling one of these up to a tech 2 version, I would honestly take the kinetic one up, uh, no explosive one sorry, um, but your kinetic does go a little bit lower at that point. Um, it's kind of up to you. I stuck with tech 1s, it was enough, but you could, you, you've got enough calibration there to fit a tech 2 version. Anyway, that is the PVE Meku Ball. I'm going to showcase that in action now just to show that it does work. Then we're going to talk about a couple of PVP fits that I've put together but not yet had chance to test. That will be theory crafting and I'd love to know your opinions. So here we see the insanity of taking a 6 billion isk ship into an outpost frontier stronghold in a C-13 Wolf Raya. Yep, and it's doing it fine. You can see here it is doing it fine. We are on the third wave. I'm actually still in shields, despite this obviously being an armor tanked vessel. Coming into that final wave, you just get your uh, your traversal up nice and quickly. I lock onto the battleships, find where they are, make sure I'm not flying in a straight line at them. And then as the other ships come past, you'll see the Mechubal just utterly chews through those frigates. Down it goes in literally three cycles, and they're fairly fast cycling auto cannons. Come on, look at that. Boom, half shields all the way down to third shields, and then through the final bit, usually in one hit, there we go. All of those frigates going down really, really quickly. You'll see I'm not orbiting those, I'm heading still kind of towards the battleships, um, making sure I'm trying to keep up my traversal against them so that those big shots from them aren't hitting me. Taking a little bit of minor damage into the armor, but it's nothing that the armor repairer cannot handle. Ultimately, my signature radius in this is literally 25 meters. It is tiny, courtesy of the Wolf Raya system effect. So we are signature tanking like a boss. Those uh, frigates have gone down very, very quickly. We are now up against the defenders themselves. You see, I'm a little bit far away to actually be doing proper damage to that, courtesy of the fall off being eight kilometers. Therefore, truly out to, I think it's about 16 kilometers in total. You're looking there, 15, 16 kilometers is the maximum range you're gonna get out of this. But we're coping just fine, getting nice and close to that sleepless defender. I kind of left it on hail because I couldn't be bothered to reload into barrage. I need to come back to hail again in a second. I'm getting close enough now that we are actually starting to do some damage or have I just swapped there I'm not entirely certain I think I've just gone back to hail either way either way you'll see we are now getting close to that battleship despite having the two webs on us one from each of those sleepless defenders and um, we're still closing the gap fairly quickly or quickly enough so that the missiles aren't doing too much damage Turn the armor repair off a little bit there just to get my capacitor back up. I am using those Nosferatus to help drain some capacitor into me as well, but you'll see we are now going around that defender. We are coming into orbit range comfortably, taking very little damage. The armor repairer is quite comfortably handling that. Probably don't need the stasis web of fire running at this point in time, um, but hey, there we are. Just why the heck not? So yeah, we're using hail, orbiting now around that sleepless defender. There we are, let's reload into hail. Sorry, no, I was in barrage. But let's see how the damage plays out there. So once that's loaded in, give it a second. I'm gonna track the defender just to get some nice pretty footage. And we're gonna start chewing through it with hail S ammunition. Nice fast cycle times, decent chunks of damage there. You can see 427 plus 56, 495, 
710 good wax of damage out of each of those cycles. Not a problem at all. I hadn't actually hit orbit. I'm going to orbit closer, 1,000 meters. You'll see I'm actually flying straight at this. And yes, I wanted to get some screenshots. Um, this is kind of the danger of me making content like this. I sometimes come off D-scan a bit, though I did have several folks from Catskull at this point positioned around system, constantly D-scanning on voice comms with me so that I could basically run these sites and other people could say, hey, Benzi, there's someone here. You might want to get that mecha ball out of system, right? I mean, look at that. Look at that shot. Beautiful ship. Beautiful Wolf IA background there. I, I, I love the look of this ship. Also worth noting the spikes at the top and the bottom. Those do actually fold forwards when it's warping. It's not just the, uh, the plates on the front that close up, but there we go. Let's continue orbiting that Sleepless Defender. You know these guys have a lot of EHP, so they do take a bit of time to chew through, but... Mechabal is not taking any damage anymore. We are quite comfortably orbiting um, and signature tanking those at point blank range. We are completely under that Sleepless Defender's guns. And once this is down, the second Sleepless Defender is even easier because we only have one web on us rather than two. Oh, actually, that said, looking at the overview, I've only got one web on me currently. Oh, no, there's the second one. There we go. Yeah, it kind of comes on and off a little bit, the second Sleepless Defender, but I'll only have one web on me guaranteed, obviously, when that first Sleepless Defender goes down. You'll see I start to just set up my orbit. I'm so small in signature radius, I don't even feel like I need to spiral in with this. I mean, look at that. I'm flying in a straight line at it, and it's still missing. Beautiful explosion. Still missing, even though I'm flying in a straight line at it because 25 meters signature radius and that missile does nothing when it hits me either because same it's a nice big missile big explosion radius and i'm so small and moving at a decent enough speed that it's just not applying but straight line straight at that defender i'm not going to keep rambling on at this one um because i just want to showcase that you can easily get into orbit even in a straight line thanks to that signature radius you shouldn't fly it like this because you are asking for that super lucky wrecking shot to hit you but we should also have enough ehp to survive that i did take a wrecking shot once in the solar cell that i was trying to run and it took me down to about half armor it was fine really not that much of a problem but there we go there we are coming into orbit now around that sleepless defender you can pretty much call this site over at this point it's just waiting while that chews through there we go proof that we can run the outpost frontier stronghold we can do the fortification frontier as well solar cell and a ruse are trickier due to getting capped out very very quickly muted out very very quickly in a situation which you can't really handle um those ships are just nasty but C2 Wolf Ray A, heck, even a standard C2, this will run comfortably. Comfortably run C2 sites. Um, it'll run C2 Wolf Ray A's really, really well. And it will, of course, I haven't tested it, but it will run all the C1 sites as well. There we are now that that webs off us, getting nice, decent orbit speed. Still hitting comfortably round that. It's missing me. Yeah, Mechabal and PVE, guys. It works. Now the first of the PvP Mechubal fits that I sort of threw together is this one here. It's an auto cannon shield tanking fit and it gets slightly higher DPS than we had in the Wolf Raya fit, but it does come at much lower standard EHP. You are therefore in danger of a single shot flapping you, but we have very high, for a ship this size at least, very high uh, shield recharge which does kind of help you out the high slots are exactly the same we're running those same 200 millimeter auto cannon twos alongside two small gold compact energy nosferatus the mid slots are where things change obviously we've got a warp scrambler faint epsilon was what i had on hand tech two would work as well you could bling this out a bit higher if you really wanted to especially if you're going to be hunting miners or things like that alongside a five mega newton yt8 compact micro warp drive CPU did become a bit of an issue while fitting this, so playing around with some compacts did help out nicely. That compact micro warp drive just allows you to get right up into the enemy's face nice and quickly. You then turn it off while you orbit and just punch them in the face till they die. This comes with a medium ancillary shield booster. Keeping the cap boosters loaded there means that we do get a decent amount of shield recharging without having to worry about our capacitor being too much of an issue. So if they're muting you, yeah, things are okay. This means you can probably swap those small compact ghouls, but again, I didn't really know what else to put in the high slot. You might have some suggestions. 
The low slots, I went for some tracking with a counterbalance compact gyro stabilizer and a tracking enhancer, sorry, a bit of DPS and tracking there, um, in order just to apply to a target a bit better, get slightly better fall off range with that tracking enhancer. Good DPS, good application, an absolute staple for PvP, right? I then added in an IFFA compact damage control just to increase our resistances across the board. It did come, this does come sort of with that addendum that you are still fairly low on your HP, but yeah, it is what it is. The final slot then was left open to interpretation and I couldn't really pick what I wanted to do, so I went for a nanofiber internal structure too. Why? Because the warp time without it is 4.49, with it fitted it's down to 3.79. Drops us from a four second, well, five second align time down to a four second, much faster to get in and out of combat, especially thanks to that 5.63 AU per second and the faster um, actual warp acceleration. So you get onto and off grid a little bit faster um, with all of that. So you align a little bit faster, you warp faster than the standard ship because you've got better warp acceleration on courtesy of being Angel Cartel. You decelerate on their grid faster, therefore you can lock on faster. It's all a good thing, right? And that nanofiber internal structure also helps with getting you up to the speed you need with the micro warp drive. Rigs, a little bit different from before. Projectile burst aerator as before for the rate of fire increase, alongside two small core defense field extenders. At this point, you might want to swap these around for something like some EM or thermal resists on the shields. Um, that may prove beneficial to you. I just liked the idea of having a bit more EHP to work with there, um, rather than relying on the resistances, but that is very much your kind of call. Again, PvP fits is something I'm a little rusty on. These are my thoughts. I'm kind of putting this out there as someone who's been flying it a little bit in PvE and seen what it can do. I'd be interested to know how folks would change this. But I do have one other fit. This secondary PvP fit is one that is using artillery rather than autocannons. I know that an artillery Cinnable and an artillery Dramiel can both be interesting ships, so I thought I'd try and ape that a little bit looking at the Mechaball. Uh, go our high slots this time around are 280 millimeter howitzer artilleries twos you can see here with quake loaded we're getting 2000 234.2 uh, dps at 1617 hit points worth of alpha strike that's not terrible for a ship of this size and it's good fall off range there as well at 25 kilometers our mid slots, obviously we swap out the scram for a warp disruptor, we need longer range point. Again, you could faction this up in order to make sure you get the two points of warp scramble strength if you wanted. I'm quite happy with this, I'd probably be running this in a sort of small gang type of environment. We then have a medium ancillary shield booster again to get that HP regen and a micro warp drive to allow us to keep range. We're kind of kiting and orbit kiting if that makes sense, you know, keeping some range um, and blapping from a distance, similar to how you'd fly perhaps a kiting Dramiel. Um, that kind of playstyle. Low slots, again, IFFA di damage control, nano fiber internal structure too, alongside a gyro stabilizer and a tracking enhancer just to push up that damage a little bit. The rigs change around slightly. We have a Locus Coordinator 2 here instead um, to have slightly better application with these rather than just straight up damage. We've got a Core Defense Field Extender 1 for that little bit of extra EHP and a small Auxiliary Thrusters 2. This is mainly just to give you some nicer speeds whilst you're moving. It helps keep you a bit more speed tanking than you would be otherwise, allows you to kite a bit more effectively because you've got slightly faster speeds for better range control. Honestly, this one, I'm a little bit, I want to try it, I want to test it, I'm not convinced this is the best PvP fit, but I'm throwing it out there because this video was intended more as a discussion and trying to open up some conversations with other folks out there who may be a bit more used to flying PvP projectile ships, especially at destroyer stage. I'm hoping maybe perhaps I might have someone like Rix Javix watching this who could give some really nice comments down below and... Let me know what I'm doing here. That would be cool. Anyway, but yeah, those are my thoughts. They're two very simple PvP fits, you know, designed to just kind of shoot, survive with signature tanking, top up your shields as needed and go from there, I kind of guess. It's, I don't know. I'm interested to see how this will actually work. Both the PvP cases. Uh, PvP is not my strong point. I'm trying to learn more about it. And if you can help with some advice, that's always greatly welcomed. 
And there we have it, the Angel Cartel Mekubal. I really like this ship. I love the way it looks as well. So before we round this video off, I just want to talk about the actual visual aesthetics on this ship because I didn't like it the first time I saw it. Then I looked at it a bit more and it really has grown on me. It looks like a Tristan on steroids and I love the Tristan to pieces. It just, it's so cool. I love this central part here where we have the Angel Cartel logo actually illuminating. It sort of fades out into this blood red and then it lights up again in a second. There it goes. I love that. And this central armature as well, those kind of plates in the center around that, when you enter warp, those all actually fold in to protect that central hub. I really like that. You've got your hard points here on the sides. You can see here's the four square ones that I was talking about and the four long, uh, oblong ones, same on both sides. It annoys me that you've got kind of two on each of those with all these unused hard points here. But if you play around with this, this is honestly the most aesthetically pleasing way of getting those hard points done. If you try and get three onto here and you only have one up here, then you have three along the top and only one down here, which makes it look really awful and counterbalanced. There is no way to actually align these properly. It's it's awful and I hate it. CCP, please to be fixing that issue. Otherwise, though, I'm quietly impressed with this ship. It's not as ridiculously overpowered as I half expected it to be. I don't think it needs buffs. I definitely don't think it needs nerfs. If anything, it probably could get a couple of buffs here and there. I don't even know what to suggest. It wasn't underwhelming. It felt very much in the middle, which I think is kind of why I almost feel it could do with a buff or two here or there. Just because of the price of this ship, I feel it should be doing more than it currently does. I don't know. I don't really have anything to back that up with, though. So it's a point of discuss. Drop into the comment section down below, folks. Seriously, this is one of those videos where I really, really am sort of reaching out to get people's opinions. So whether you've got an, uh, an opinion on the fits or how I was flying it, whether it's just a visual sort of preference, because I love this ribbing here as well and these lights up the side. It is just a badass looking ship, right? Come on. What is not to love about this vessel? Really, really cool. Even the name Mekubal strikes fear into the hearts of your enemies. Can't wait until the price drops on this a little bit more so I can fly it a bit more freely and hopefully have some more people out there flying them around as well to really showcase what this vessel can do. Anyway, folks, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Special thanks to everyone who is able to support the channel. It means the world to me. All of your names are coming up in the credits in just a second. Otherwise, folks, happy sailing and see you in New Eden.